video from CTL is designed to help you better understand why and how to use the peer reviewing tool, Aropa. Aropa is a web-based peer reviewing tool that allows students to evaluate each other's work. It is free for both instructors and students to use. Using Aropa, students can provide quantitative and qualitative feedback to other students in order to identify areas of potential growth for their peers. Aropa can be used for both formative and summative modes of assessment, but CTL recommends that Aropa be used exclusively as a formative assessment tool. The advantage of using Aropa is that students can receive relatively immediate feedback on their work that can identify areas of potential growth. This is especially helpful in classes with large numbers of students, as it is difficult for you to assess every student's work in an ongoing fashion. This process works especially well when you use it before an assignment or exam in your course that takes place that is included in their overall grade. In order to get started on Aropa, you must contact Helen Purchase, one of the administrators of the site, at helen.purchase at glasgow.ac.uk. Ask Helen to set up a course for you on Aropa, and she will reply with a username and password that will get you started. Go to aropa.gla .ac.uk. To access the University of Alberta's account, please click on the icon of the Big Bear, seen here, or choose the University of Alberta from this drop-down menu. Use the username and password that you are given from Helen. You can change it later. On this page, click on Add a new class in the top left-hand corner. You can see it here. This is where you'd name your class. For the purpose of this video, I'm just going to name it Sandbox. Students will need an access code in order to get themselves set up on this site. So decide on an access code and be sure to provide it to your students after the course has been set up. An access code might look something like this. Click on this drop down menu here and choose a discipline from the list that best suits your course. I'm going to choose Chemistry and click Save. The first thing you'll need to do to set up your course is to edit a class list. Click on this button here. In this box, you'll need to decide how students will be identified. For example, you can choose to use their names, ID numbers, or their eClass anonymous ID numbers that you can find on eClass. It really depends on whether or not you would like students to work on the reviews anonymously or not. The benefit of working anonymously is that students won't be able to know who's assessing their work and may be able to provide more unbiased feedback. You'll have to enter these in manually. Be sure to click Return or Enter after each identifier. At the bottom, you can identify yourself as an instructor and a TA as another instructor or guest marker. I've chosen to identify myself as JCL. That's my CCID. It's crucial here that you identify yourself as the instructor and a TA if you have one as the guest marker. It's crucial that you do this because they will be given administrative rights to the course in order to create assignments or change settings. When you're finished, click Save on the bottom. Once your class is set up, the first thing you'll need to do is create an assignment. Click here. This is where you'll name your assignment. I'm going to name my assignment, pretty simply, Assignment 1. The next two steps are very important. The first one is that you'll need to decide when you want your authors to submit. So the deadline you can choose from this menu. I'm going to choose October 11th at 8 p.m. After that, you'll need to choose a date and time that reviewers need to have their reviews submitted by. Now that date is your preference, but CTO recommends that you give your students somewhere between three and five days to submit the reviews. The next step is to provide the instructions for the assignment here in this window, but it really depends on what you want the students to submit. You'll notice the submission requirements below. Here you can choose students to submit something right to Europa in its editor or upload a file from the following types. As I would like my students to submit a PDF of their work, I'm going to include that in the submission instructions.
If you like, you can have authors submit a number of files to Europa by clicking on that box. Here you can choose again from the drop down menu what else you would like the students to submit. Let's say I would like them to submit an Excel sheet along with their PDF document here. In the reviewing and feedback section, you can choose how the review process will take place. You can choose if authors can see marks and comments here or comments alone here. Here you can choose to restrict feedback that allows authors to view their feedback from their peers regardless of whether they themselves completed a review or not, view their feedback if they complete only one of their required reviews, or they can view their feedback only if they complete all of their required reviews. I would recommend the bottom. Here's where you can choose whether the author's identity will be known to the reviewer. And finally, you can choose whether or not the authors will perform a self-assessment on their work. So Europa does allow for some self-assessment as well. Click Save when you're ready. Below are some less commonly used options. For the purpose of this video, I'll just skip those. Now that you've created an assignment, you'll need to make some adjustments in order to activate it and release it to your students. Europa displays crucial parts of the assignment that you'll want to have set up before activating it here in this yellow box. The first thing you'll notice is a rubric. Click on Edit Rubric here. Because this is your first assignment in your first class on Europa, you'll need to create a rubric from scratch, or you can use and adapt one from a number of examples that Europa gives you here in this drop-down menu. If you'd like some advice on how to create a quality rubric, please visit CTL's website listed here. In this window here, you can set up your rubric. I'm going to save some time and copy and paste the rubric I've already created to show you how it might work. Here you can see that I've created a rubric with four levels of grades, one through four. Beside each of those grades, you'll see that I've provided the students with a qualitative description of what that grade equals. I think those descriptions are crucial as it'll help the students better understand what they should be looking for while reviewing other students' work. Remember, it's the students that will be the assessors now. I've created radio buttons beside each quantity for the students to click on here. Radio buttons are one option you can choose from here in this drop-down menu entitled Europa. I've also created two comment boxes for the reviewers to provide more detail in their feedback. For this assignment, I chose things I liked about your post and things I think you can improve upon, referencing the rubric. In the first box, students would comment on each other's work and list things that they thought were, were great, things that they liked. And in the bottom, students would list things that they, they thought could be improved upon in reference to the rubric which I just provided. When you're finished completing your rubric, click Save. The next step is for you to specify locations for your new assignment. Europa gives you four options to choose for allocations. You can choose to allocate reviews randomly by authors creating tags specific to their work, by groups, or manually, where you set it up specific to your needs. I'm going to choose to allocate randomly. If you would like only students to peer review each other's work, then leave the dot on all students in the class at the top. Under the Reviewers Are section, I recommend that you keep it on all students who submit. Here you can choose how many reviews each reviewer is responsible for. I'm going to choose two, which means that every author who submits something uh, must review two other authors' work. Click Save when you're finished. If you would like to create an extension for one or several students should you need to do that, click on Manage Extensions here and fill out these few windows. Once your students have submitted something, you can monitor those submissions by clicking here. To give you a better example of what this might look like, I'm going to use a previous course that I've used before. This window will tell you who that author is, the word count of their submission, and when it was uploaded. Once the review deadline is passed, you can monitor those reviews by clicking here. Uh, this window will tell you who the author is, who reviewed their work, if the reviewer has viewed the submission at all, if the review has been received, and finally, if the review has been read by the author. In this example, I had each student review two other students' work. If you would like to see how students are reviewing other students' work, click here on View All Reviews. There are many things you can do on this page, but I'm just going to show you what it looks like if you click on one of these authors' ID numbers. Here you can see that the student received two reviews. 
one was a four out of a four, and the other was a three out of four. Below those grades, you can view the qualitative input that the reviewers gave the authors for their work. You can choose to download all author submissions by clicking here on this button. And finally, you can choose to view the marks that each author received by clicking here. Let's review what you've learned in this video. You'll have some important decisions to make before you decide if Europa is right for you and your course. The first is whether you think peer assessment can be used in your course specifically. It's possible that peer assessment is not compatible uh, for your specific needs or that Europa isn't the best tool for you to use. The most difficult decision you're likely to make uh, is how to allocate those reviews. That will be specific to your preferences and experiences with the students in your specific course. You might decide that the entire class might evaluate their peers' group presentation, for example. Or you might have each student only review one other student's individual work. That is completely up to you, and Europa allows you those options. Finally, you'll need to decide how you plan to use the peer reviews. Is it simply for the student's learning, or will it be you using it for instructional purposes yourself? Europa is an effective peer reviewing tool that is free to use. Remember that it is best used for formative modes of assessing student work, and that's what CTL recommends you use Europa for. Remember that Europa allows students to receive relatively immediate feedback on their work without demanding too much of your time. Setting up Europa may take some time, but once it's running, all you'll need to do is monitor how students are using it. This video provided you with a lot of detailed instructions on how to get Europa set up for your course. Revisit this video to review those instructions as you like. That's about all you need to know to get Europa up and running for your course. We hope that this video has provided you with some helpful instruction to integrate Europa for you into your course, and we thank you for watching.